Okay, so what we've done is we've done the mid end game transition. In this one, we're looking at how to dominate the chess opening, any chess opening, and before you get to the mid end game stage. Because you have to start off with a good footing in order to establish further, better, solid foundations for your next positions. So let's have a look at how to dominate a chess opening. Going on a turn zero. So the issue, initial idea is trying to manage the pawns in the center as best possible and try and just get those off and take the knight off the board, keeping it nice and simple. And the domination factor, as we know, is about trying to make them do things they don't want to do. We try to get them to bait a pawn here, but they're not doing that at the minute. So we're just going to develop the knight and support the pawn. Now we've baited the pawn, we can take and then put a check on the king. And that's the opening stage, more or less developed in a sense. We'll do a few more moves to really establish the dominant thing that we're talking about. And when we say dominance, it's not about knocking the, um, knocking the air out of the opponent. It's about you feeling confident with the position that you've got on the board. We do have two pieces attacking there at the minute, but king safety is key. So we've castled, we've got that out of the way. And we can move the knight, we don't need to leave the, leave the knight there. Uh, we can move the knight across. I think that works okay. Or we can put a check on the king just to be a little bit annoying. Okay, so the bishop goes back. And we can then put an x-ray through, just developing the bishop. Or we can attack the pawn in the corner. I think we'll go with the x-ray through to the bishop. Bring the bishop back and back here if it's getting attacked. And now we're feeling fairly comfortable. Would love to bring this here, but the rook is just going to come here. And then we can move, mobilize. But if we take this knight and the bishop takes, we have a two on one on this pawn. I have to be mindful the bishop can take, but I think if we take and then we're going to transition into the end, the mid, well, we've done the mid-ish, now we're going to be hitting the end game, depending on what they do with the queen. So we can take the queen. Yep. And the rook is owning the file, the bishop's going to be doubling the pawns here, and then we're going to be hitting the end game. So I'm feeling fairly happy with that position. Is there anything else that we could look to do? Could we just bring the rook here, but then the bishop takes the knight? But then we can take the queen. But then he can take our rook. And then the queen survives though if he does that. Yeah. So shall we go with this? Doubling of the rooks. Well not doubling of the rooks but attacking here. If the queen takes the knight can take. We are giving up a pawn. Could take with the rook. Doesn't have to take though, then the bishop takes. So we'll see how it lands. And the queen has moved. The queen has moved. Doesn't want to go into the end game, wants to stay in the mid type range. We can hit the queen, because I'm not really sure what it's doing there. It's got no protection on it at the minute. It has got a two on one on the rook, on the on my rook. But we'll attack the queen because it's got no protection. If it is taking, we can take with the knight. So they do take, so we can move the knight and attack the bishop, but the bishop is going to be attacking the pawn. If we take with the rook, the bishop's still taking the pawn and they're owning the file. I'm actually going to take and give up the pawn. I don't think that there's anything to worry about there because our rook can come here. Bishop goes probably back here to defend the pawn if we're thinking of coming across here. We can take, but they'll be owning the file, and that's a key thing. So, dark square bishop, they're not plus out of that exchange, so we can move the knight. 
and anything else move the king as it's coming towards the end game type of situation which is the better move take rook takes rook comes here i'm going to simply move the king don't think there's any point in doing this because like we said it just goes to protect so he's exiting through to the rook so we may as well move the knight we could move the knight to feel safe here let's move it here center of the board give it a bit of play you can always come back and attack the bishop if it needs to and they're looking to try and get some sort of play with the doubling of the rooks Moving the king first, obviously supporting. So they're attacking the um, knight. And they're probably looking to hit the rook here. Coming here. He attacks the rook. Rook takes. So at this point in time, I think we can take the rook with a check anyway. Yep. And then just bring the knight back here. On a white square. Stopping the bishop from coming here, so I think they'll want to try and get rid of the knight. I'm not doing that just yet. So a knight versus a bishop in the end game. Some would say the bishop's winning, and it looks fairly symmetrical all the way across. What do we want to do? Shall we move the rook and start playing around here? But like we mentioned before, the bishop's just coming here and supporting this pawn. But it can't protect both, so it might be a bit tricky for them. Let's go with this. Let's move up. Knight's protecting here at the minute. It's on a safe square. Pawns are on safe squares from the bishop. So the idea of this session was about dominating the opening. And we did that in our own little world, dominating the opening. I think we can take this pawn, but the bishop will take. So if we take this pawn on the bishop, bishop's kind of trapped in a way. Rook's got no support to be putting any checkmates on, so we can take. And the pawn takes, and then we can come here, attacking the pawn. Obviously, the rook comes to defend. Doesn't come to defend, so it comes coming around the back. So let's take this. And then let's go here, supporting the pawn. Should really be the other way around, but what can you do? Let's move the king, and we're in end game mode with a plus one. So the king's shooting down. And when you have an advantage, you're supposed to be pushing your advantage. So we don't have an advantage on this side, but let's try and let get these pawns locked down or exchanged off. Just trying to stop the king from coming here. So he's still going to be coming for the rook. And we can charge up and go for their pawn. He's still going to hit us anyway. So we need to move the king off of the line of the rook attack. Maybe go here because he may come down and start attacking this pawn. He does put the check on. Do we come back? Don't really want to go back, but let's go back. For a brief moment, maybe start pushing. So we want these pawns off the board anyway, so we can hit the king. If he goes back, if he doesn't, so hit the king. No real rush, it's four minutes. But the idea of the dominating the opening part has been done. Hmm. So we have this, but you can take, so we can support the pawn first. And then there's that oh okay it's so just taking anyway is there any squishes put a check on the king he has to move yep I think we'll just put a simple check on the king try and keep it nice and tidy don't want to overexert. we have a pawn that they have to um, sort of babysit trying to make something of it let's just get this pawn here chew this come up a bit 
it does stop the king from moving though so let's be mindful of that let's go right to the back so the rook will be coming for this pawn exchange and mass so we need to get elevated and potentially attacking something like this so it's not doing that just yet right come all the way across just to take the pawn he comes and gets this we take I might as well just leave that one just hanging there oh in fact if we will go like this his rook takes rook takes his king comes into the corner we push up he pushes up we push onto the pawn doesn't have to take though does he there then we push past blocking and then our king comes around the side maybe nice nice technical end game or we can just go and attack the pawn he may come and defend which one looks better i think this one feels cleaner i don't think there's a zug swang in that pattern well that we did so he has taken let's take push see if that works he's up we hit takes or not takes if he doesn't push past yeah okay so we push past and come across he's going to be wanting to push this one but that gets past as well king supporting this pawn when he's pushing here and he's not doing that let's push here this is the picture I was kind of seeing. Let's come across and we go here. Now he pushes, but we're close enough to this pawn. Let's go here. Let's take and take supporting the pawn. So that was a very nice way of showing the dominant opening dominating the chess opening but also taking it a little bit further and managing the mid to end game transition and looking at a proper end game like this a little bit intricate and yeah very smooth game okay next game in how to dominate a chess opening it's what we've been working on for many moons developing within the um mantra within the answer process so in a nutshell you want to maybe try and manage the center as best possible and being brave sometimes as well just to am i going to attack this pawn here because we've got the queen supporting it's being brave and risky but look understanding pawn breaks and the position on the board but you're really wanting to try and feel like you're driving that initiative not quick and dirty tactics as we've shown in the first game it's a nice chess development playing proper chess and understanding the pieces working the pieces together position on the board managing the spaces managing the key pieces attacking a higher pieces with lesser pieces and utilizing the basics of chess such as rooks owning open files knights trying to manage the center a little bit those types of things and bishops sitting in diagonals that are really more productive um, for the longer game. So managing the opening. So dominating the opening for me is trying to get it open as best possible, especially within the center. Obviously the knight's going to be taken. Oh, the pawn's taken. Right, so this is opening up the queen. So I'm going to bring the bishop here and x-ray through to their queen. As you know, don't want to get carried away with narration mode. When I'm starting to talk fast and stuff, my brain is about 10 or 15 moves behind what I'm actually talking about. So I need to slow that down so that we don't spoil the domination of the chess opening. So the next thing for us is looking at the king safety. For now, there doesn't look to be any issues with the king. So I think I'm going to be brave and just develop the bishop out. There's no way made we're taking this pawn, but we're just bringing the bishop to improve. The bishop comes here, it's kind of biting on its own little bit of activity, but the knight can take. So this is where I'm going to bring the bishop back. If the knight wasn't there, I probably would have taken because the bishop would have been in a bad position. 
So we're still in the opening stage and we're trying to, we've got a target of dominating. So we do like targets per se, because it does help us improve. It does open up the space to attack the queen now. So the bishop can actually take, so it's not going to impact on the king. All right, so that's okay. So they have a two on one on this pawn. So I think it's time to take this knight off the board so that they don't have the two on one anymore. And the bishop is in that position that we said, well, that's a bit of a nasty position for it. It's blocked by its own pawn. Knight can come and attack the bishop. It does free it up to kind of stop queenside castling. Are we queenside castling? Might as well. We may as well. I don't see any dangers to that. And then we can develop the knight out. Could attack the pawn. Don't think we're going to do anything with the pawn. Is it blocking the dark square bishop? Don't think there's much happening there at the minute. So that's the opening in my head. My personal domination of trying to gain that key initiative for a better position on the board then transferring into the mid game which we have done and now we're basically in end game mode here now so that's me complete for the domination of the chess opening we can stop playing now so we'll continue now and and blend the end game because we now are in end game so that transition through to the mid game mid game to the end game happened very quickly we know the bishop's going to get hit now with this pawn so do we, we've got options. Do we bring the bishop here and let the knight take it because it's kind of the bad bishop, it's the dark one? Or do we leave it here and it still gets taken anyway? I'm actually just going to bring it here and offer it up. So then I'm looking at how can we make some space towards their king because the rooks don't have any open files apart from this one we're offering up this bishop if the knight doesn't take they may be thinking well you've just locked off yeah exactly you've just locked off your only open file for your rooks knight can come here if the bishop takes then we can move the bishop back into into line because the knight is attacking this pawn it's attacking the bishop so i would assume the bishop would take But it's not, it's gone back and defended the pawn. So it does give the knight a little bit of space to... Where did the knight come from? Was it here? It was there already. Okay, so we can leave it there. I was thinking of bringing it back here to protect the pawn, but why not bring this pawn all the way up here? And support. I think we're going to do that. We can bring the knight around. That's easily resolved. Let's not do that let's not do that let's not do that would come here but it doesn't look too it's going to get hit there's nothing really targeting there i think we're safe bringing it back here their knights on the pawn as usual so we're probably looking to bring the bishop here at some point probably need to push this i think their focal point is on trying to attack the king area with these pawns just to open up the space, which is the answer to chess. Okay, we can move the king across. So the dancing with the bishop. Let's move the bishop like we said. But we were supposed to support the pawn ah, before we did that. Only reason I moved it because it's got a two on one with the knight. So we've just given them a pawn. All right. So that's moving too quickly but we'll take this rook anyway and let's hit the bishop i don't think it's that favorable a position for them even though they've got the pawn yep so they've moved and given us the bishop Which is a bit of a stinger. 
these things happen in the game of chess. As we just mentioned, we don't think it gave them that better position. They obviously could have just moved the bishop, but they may have just believed that, well, oh, this isn't working. They're still playing on, so do we go for the exchange of the rooks, thinking we've got something with our extra minor piece? Probably take the chance and see if we can do some. Lucky, yes. You know, how to get lucky in chess. He's not going for the exchange, so the rook can come here, but do we get locked in? We'll be attacking the bishop. Bishop moves again. Or maybe it comes here attacking this pawn or something. Okay, let's attack the bishop. I've slowed down my narration mode now. Because it does get me in trouble. But the exercise that we're going through this session is how to dominate a chess opening. So we did dominate the chess opening in our world. So it's attacked the pawn from this direction. So it's um same thing. We can just push this pawn here for now. Yeah, so the session is about dominating a chess opening. So we've done that. We are now just in the end game, just flowering up the end end of the game. So we can take the knight. And he's looking for his pawn to come in here, um, attacking, so the knight can then attack the bishop. So we could attack their bishop. He takes our knight, we take his bishop. Or just take first and then attack the bishop. Bishop goes in. Oh, damn. Didn't see it working out that way, did we? We were so focused on trying to come across here, thinking the bishop was going to go there, but they didn't. So let's attack the bishop. So that's when they'll go into there. When they don't do what you expect them to do, you know, that's where you have to really think about your position. And my piece is working together as a team. So it's gone there. Can't push here, there's no support. Looks a little bit. Could just keep dancing backwards and forwards there, couldn't we? We need to find a plan. We don't have anything that can support. We are owning this file briefly because this king's going to start coming across. We need to get our king up, 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 up in there. No support. Don't let the time run out. And we could hit this pawn. I'm going to hit this pawn. Some activity. And should we push this pawn? Going towards the king area, so they're going to start getting into a bit of a flap. Right, so if we take, ship's locked in still. Coming for the rook. As we said, that was always going to happen. I'm going to push this pawn. He has to move this pawn first before he comes for the rook, I suppose. And the bishop has... To, what's he looking to do? Stop the rook from coming here. If we go like this, he takes... We take, he takes... Takes, and then the bishop takes, so they win. Let's take now. Okay, proper end game mode again. We'll bring the rook down one. It's on a white square though, we don't really want white square stuff. Bishop here, push. Go with this, see if we can get that push, then get the rook hitting the king. Knight's not getting into play, so, oops, excuse me. Potentially jumping here and here. So it's going to be, oh yeah, so if we go like this, we can't do the stuff. I think he's looking to get our rook off the board, isn't he, with this. Let's go with the knight. And now he's going to take the pawn. Yes, exactly. So we can now move the knight, attacking this pawn. Comes back to defend. But then we can push this one. 
we can push this one and go with the original plan here. Not that it's anything major, but disturbance towards the king might help. He is moving, so if we put the check on, it just simply moves there because he doesn't want the discovered check on the king here. Because we'll be able to go and get his rook. So he's going to go, not sorry, there, there. I think he has to move there because if he, yes, exactly. Right, so now the knight can put a check on the king. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, can put the check on the king. Bishop's protecting, almost forgot myself. Narration mode not going really fast. Take. And then we'd get the rook off the board if he stays there. So he's potentially having to come here. Oh, that's going to hurt. So that's another game of showing the domination of the chess opening and the impacts on the mid and end game type scenarios. Let's just attack the pawn here, keep it simple. Looking for stalemate positions. Bishop's protected, but he's ooh, looking to attack here. The cheek on it. Okay, let's just push. Bring the bishop here. Push. Push. The queen. Let's just put the check on. He's hiding and going to get a pawn as well. Well, we don't like them apples, do we? So let's just attack the king, put a check on. And not even checkmate, he's hiding in here. But then the queen can come here. Right, okay. Put the check. Oh, never sound. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so another game of dominating the chess opening, attempting to dominate the chess opening with the answer process, the mantra, position play, and again, you know, managing those key spaces. Definitely about managing your pawn breaks, especially, and working your pieces together as a team, especially the minor pieces in the early part of the game to help the transition into the mid and end game um, processes. Okay, this is the last one in the how to dominate a chess opening series. As usual, just hit in the center. So this is our normal game that we've been showing for many moons. So we're trying to manage the center as best possible, capturing the relevant pieces, and then, oh, let's take this queen off the board, and then supporting pieces when it, oh, what was that? I thought the knight was coming there. You see, that's moving too fast. Right, so let's take the bishop off the board. Not that anything major happened, but I could have probably found a different type of position. Shall we castle queen side now then? So the opening has been done. We are now in end game. See how quickly we transposed from the opening to the mid to the end. Yeah, queens are off the board. Now we're in end game mode. The longer part of the end game. What are we looking for now here? Want to get the bishop out of the area. So I think going here just to manage the bishop attacking and the knight attacking. This pawn is going to be under attack, so we need to manage that so it does prevent the bishop from attacking our rook. Now they're targeting this pawn. I think because the g pawn is going to be attacked, we'll support it by supporting itself. And we can take, or we can push, or we can just leave like this and just go with this pawn. Don't need to be too arty about anything. Knight can take, or do we want to open up the space for the bishop? Um, I think we want to keep the bishop open. We could still attack just to try and develop the knight. They're not castled as yet. I don't know if they've got castle in rise. Yeah, they have, yeah. So the castle queen side, we could just bring the knight here, looking to attack this space, try and manage. So as we're showing, managing the center usually is okay. And this pawn is all by itself, so I think if we bring it together as part of this, this team, 
and um, that should work for us if we take the pawn he has a kind of isolated pawn here I think that might be a benefit because it's disturbing the pawns in front of his king all right so next thing for us to consider that would be nice but the knight is there at the minute Rooks like the open files, so we want to stick with the basics and just bring the rook here, trying to get management here. That gives us the excuse to put a check on his king and get the rooks off the board. But even with the pawns, they've got more centerish pawns. They've got two split pawns here. King's gone in front of his rook. Is, does it look different? Rook takes, rook takes, and then he's owning the file. What is this? What is this? We we'll bring the bishop here, and if the king's moving, then we can take. I think we'll do that rather than taking the rook off the board. It's the smallest of details in terms of managing the that file. Okay, so we're managing it for a brief moment. King's defending here at the minute, so he's not playing ball in that sense, but we can move the bishop back again. He didn't like that arrangement. What am I stalling for? I don't know why I thought this might work there, because the rook just takes. Let's bring the bishop here and see if we can target this pawn, which is blocked by the knight, but then the pawn will drop. Ooh, he's attacking our pawn. We were planning to attack their pawn. So the knight can hit. What's he seeing? Some sort of fork. Can't see the fork at the minute. Let's just hit the knight. And he's blocking off our attempt at attacking here. Whether he's doing it on purpose or not, I don't know. But The bishop doesn't want to stay there. It's going to get hit. And if we're going to split the pawns. Gonna have an isolated pawn. Looks a bit messy, doesn't it? I think we should, we need to keep the bishop on the board. That's what I think. Knights come and come here, attacking the rook. That's what I think should happen. Got x ray through to their king. Push or push. I think pushing this one because then we have a check on the king. Not that it's anything major, it's probably giving them the excuse to come further towards these pawns. It's not doing that just yet, so do we keep pushing and pushing, see if we can disturb these pawns? We're in a nice position with their knight though, because it's protecting this here. We do get a check on the king, but the king can come further towards our king. Might be issues with what we're planning, but let's go with this. We are trying. It's always the danger when you're attacking, especially in the end game, how you actually sending them closer towards your king and you're getting checkmated. It's on a white square with his rook. Let's put continue with the check. I mean, he can just simply go here because we can't take this pawn because the knight is there. All right, so come here. But no, the knight can take. That knight is in a juicy spot. If we swing all the way across here to attack this measly pawn, Look at his pieces coming around our king. Knight comes here. Let's go and attack the measly pawn. Makes a bit of space for us to potentially try and get this pawn pushed up. I'm not seeing... Okay, I'm going to take that. Have some sort of plan going. I don't know what's the rook doing. Nothing's on a white square now. Have we jammed our rook in? Oh, let's attack this knight. Got no protection for a brief moment. 
Oh, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. I don't think that's a major impact on our position. Attacking the bishop. So does he have some sort of crazy fork thing that I have missed? So he comes here, gets another check on our king. So if we move the bishop here, and we can take the knight. Just it is blocking our rook. Get out of the equation altogether. It is blocking the rook, isn't it? Yeah, let's go here anyway. And try and make some space for the pawn pushing up. Because his rook at the minute is kind of jammed in. So it's not going to be able to stop the rook, um, pawn from promoting. We'd have to rely on the knight. Unless he's got some checkmate position that I have totally missed. Rooks in the centre of the board don't have a place. Oh, he's making space now. He's making space and he's actually going to be hitting the rook. So if he goes with the check on the king and we take, then we obviously that's not going to work, is it? I think we need to move the king. And if we move the king, his rook takes the pawn. So we could move the king back. And then we don't have to take. Or is there something better? Push the pawn. Supporting. And then when the check comes on, we don't have to move. Well, we have to move the king. Yeah, push the pawn. Knight puts the check on. And the pawn supporting the rook when the bishop moves. I think we'll go with that. Time's running down, it's three minutes. Still in blitz mode though. So a check, maybe we go up and he has another check. So maybe it might be just safer just coming back. Check. not doing it just yet so we can bring the bishop here and attack the rook oh, he takes the pawn doesn't he so maybe just move, move the rook now we've got time to move the rook haven't we and attack their pawn then he puts the check up yeah okay yeah that's fine what's the check on we just move the king Making space for trying to push these pawns down, but also maybe to block the pawn pushing up. Shall we take? I've got a check on as he let's take. Yeah, so he's made space so he can actually stop the pawn. Still pushing. Do, do, do. Could attack, but let's just maybe put a check on the king. Let him know we're still in the game. Or push the pawn. Past pawns want to be pushed. Let's push this baby. Oh, take. What is the deal here? Take. Knight puts the check on the king. Take. take. Knight puts the check on the king. Has he got. Ooh, look at that. Look at that fork he's got up there. Attacking the bishop. But the bishop's got protection, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. Go up. Can keep putting checks on. I'm going up. Going up. Going for the fork, I think. We are actually on his rook as well. Oh, that's got to hurt, hasn't it? Let's take. And take, and that's the game.
Crikey, that's the last one in the how to dominate a chess opening. And obviously the impact of transitioning through to the mid game, through to the end game. Looks like the opponents left the game.